welcome back to microbial concepts so in this video we are going to learn about bioaccumulation and biomagnification both of these terms are or these processes are different but they go in tandem that means they happen simultaneously okay so let's start with this video to know more about bioaccumulation and biomagnification so do watch this video till the end to get your concepts clear so as i told you these are different processes okay but they often occur in tandem with one another now bioaccumulation is process by which toxins they enter the food web by building up in individual organism now by the term bioaccumulation it is easy to know that accumulation means something is building up something is accumulating in a living organism okay that is bioaccumulation now both these terms they are uh, generally used when we refer to some kinds of pollutants okay so do remember we are dealing here with some kind of pollutants okay now this is about toxins which enter in food web in building up by building up in a individual organism okay so each and every organism in a food web is getting affected now what is biomagnification so it is the process by which toxins they are passed from one trophic level to the next and thereby increase in concentration within a food web okay so uh, example here like mercury increases up in the food chain how so it is uh, say it it's released in a form of industrial waste to water so that's how mercury enters in a water body then the planktons which are growing there in water body they um, consume some level of mercury now some aquatic insects which feed on some planktons they consume that mercury okay so now the mercury is getting passed on to the um, another level okay now the insect eating fishes they uh, feed on these aquatic insects and that's how the mercury from aquatic insects is passed on to the insect eating fishes and thereby to the fish eating fishes and then to humans as humans also consume fish okay so that's how each and every trophic level in a food web is getting affected and now humans they we just uh, keep on consuming fish now and then throughout our life so what happens the number of time you eat fish the mercury concentration increases okay so it is actually very low in the water but as fish feeds on an insect eating fish which feeds on aquatic insect which feeds on planktons so the concentration keeps on increasing okay so that's what we are going to learn now this is a very beautiful um, diagram from uh, national geographic which is self explanatory so biomagnification and bioaccumulation so how can pollutants have long term effects on organisms so you can see here so even when pollutants are not dangerous enough to kill animals outright their presence can have lasting effect on food webs through bioaccumulation and biomagnification so toxins they may increase in concentration as they are passed up uh, passed up the food chain and this is the term we call it as biomagnification okay so each time it is passed up okay one level up in a food web so for example we will consider here pcb that is a pollutant that is polychlorinated biphenyls they enter the ocean means water as industrial waste and they are absorbed by microscopic phytoplanktons so you can see these are phytoplanktons and the red dot is what is the pollutant that is pcb okay at the bottom of the food chain they are the lowest one in the food chain now what happens these zooplanktons means very small um, insects which are present which feed on these phytoplanktons they consume them okay so even the phytoplanktons absorb only tiny amount small creatures which are known as zooplanktons they eat large quantities of phytoplanktons and taking the pcb from what the phytoplanktons eat okay so now they are passed upon to the another trophic level 
Now what happens? Small fishes they then they feed on zooplankton's, continuing to magnify the amount of PCB up the food chain. Okay, so this has been passed from phytoplanktons to zooplanktons, zooplanktons to the small fishes, and now a large fish like a predator, apex predator, who consumes these fish, small fishes, they, uh, sorry, from them, the lots of uh, or a large amount of PCB is getting passed upon. Okay, so in water of the Pacific Northwest, apex predator like the killer well ends up with the highest concentration of toxins due to the biomagnification okay so this is how the cycle goes on now about bioaccumulation so bioaccumulation occurs when pollutants build up in single organism's body over the time that means um, for example we will take a single fish in consideration for now which is uh, there in a fresh water now, if a fresh water is all the time, say twice or thrice a month, it is uh, or, or industrial waste has been thrown in that particular fresh water river, then what happens? The mercury is getting um, mixed with the fresh water. And the fish that we are studying now is getting exposed to that particular level of mercury. So what happens? Slowly, slowly, the mercury is getting absorbed by the fish or it is getting consumed by say uh, phytoplankton zooplanktons okay so that's how the mercury keeps on entering the fish body so over a period of time the level of mercury also increases okay so that is what is bioaccumulation it accumulates it, it builds up in a body okay so that is bioaccumulation so bioaccumulation occurs when pollutants build up in a single organism's body over a time best example to remember is of mercury so it is a pollutant that has entered waterways and lakes through industrial pollution and fish and shellfish absorb the mercury directly from the environment although they may only absorb small amounts at a time okay they absorb small amount at a time but over the period of time it becomes too much the mercury can remain in the fish body for months or even longer. This leads to the mercury buildup or accumulating in the fish body, posing a danger to any organism that eats that particular fish. Okay. So I hope now the terms are clear. So now let's move towards the another point that is what are the similarities? So first point, bioaccumulation and bio biological magnification, they are two processes of accumulating toxin chemicals okay but in different levels in food chain so when we are studying a particular level of a food chain we are concentrating on bioaccumulation how the pollutant is accumulating in that particular organism but in case of biomagnification we are studying overall food web how it is getting passed on to the next level in a food web then they describe the movement of toxic compounds through various trophic levels of a food chain. Generally, these toxic chemicals accumulate in the tissue of living organism. That is the similarity. Then the factors that determine the concentration of toxin chemicals in particular level of food chain includes persistence, then food chain energetics and rate of excretion. Okay, so these are the factors upon which the concentration of toxic chemical it depends that is the persistence of the chemical in that particular environment then food chain energetics and the level of excretion now some chemicals they are not just chemicals i can say there are some compounds or substances which a particular organism can break down and can excrete through its body but some compounds they are very harmful and they cannot be um, regulated or metabolized through uh, organisms body so they just start accumulating okay so that's the difference so let's focus on bioaccumulation so it is nothing but building up of something in the body of an organism okay so typically damaging or harmful chemicals is what we are talking here or we are focusing now these chemicals they will not break down in the body or they are not able to be excreted and thus causing to accumulate in the body over the time that is bioaccumulation 
Now, what are the two main causes? So, when a chemical that organism can break down, it enters the body too quickly and too much in the amount. The organism is not able to keep up with the incoming amount of chemical that has to be broken down, and thus it starts accumulating. Okay, so the amount of chemical which is coming inside the body, the organism is not able to keep up with the amount, and thus the chemical starts accumulating in the body. Okay, that's the first reason. And the second one, when the chemical enters the organism and it is not able to break it down at all, okay, so it cannot do anything uh, of that particular chemical. So what happens? It also cannot excrete it. So the chemical can then continue to accumulate and cause illness and potentially death of that particular organism. So these are the two main causes of bioaccumulation. So simple examples to write, uh, I can say you can write about car emission that is chemical pollutants, air pollutants which build up in birds and animals from that particular surrounding and mercury build up in fish. Okay. Then about biomagnification. So biomagnification means building up of various unimportant and at times harmful substances by the organism at different levels in food chain. It occurs when industrial, agricultural, human waste, they are dumped in water bodies. Okay. So most of these waste is toxin or sorry, toxic. It is dangerous and it is deposited on the seabed. So the bottom feeders of the food chain, they consume it first and then gradually it is carried, uh, carried up to the top level of the food chain. Now the concentration of toxic material increases with every step up on a food chain as the amount of the food that the organism in that particular food level consumes, it also is important and it is actually more. Okay, so for example, zooplanktons they feed too much on phytoplanktons. Okay, now the insect eating fishes they feed too much on uh, zooplanktons as compared to the phytoplanktons. Okay, so that's how the level is the level increases, the amount of food that is consumed also increases, and thus the concentration of toxic material also increases now ultimately it affects the humans as they sit on the top of most of the food chains and human beings they consume fishes that are higher on the food chain therefore they are likely to carry the substantial amount of toxic elements now the containment information about biomagnification states that heavy metals such as mercury arsenic they are also involved and the pesticides like polychlorinated biphenyls, that is PCB compounds, DDT, they are inter entering human body via food that they. So a real time example to mention regarding biomagnification is, for example, use of DDT. So say a marshy area is sprayed with DDT to control the growth of uh, mosquitoes. What happens? the DDT residues they get mixed up with the water body nearby water body and these residues they uh, affect the ecosystem of the water body how the lower uh, phytoplanktons they absorb DDT or the cells very small insects which are living in the water body they absorb DDT then small uh, insect eating fishes they feed upon these cells or the um, insects and that's how the DDT is passed on. Okay. Now, when one level up trophic level, we are studying what happens the food that they consume, uh, it is more in the quantity. So what happens? The concentration also increases by the 10 time. And that is how the DDT is also getting uh, more attention nowadays because it is also considered as a pollutant and it is entering the food web very quickly okay so what are the causes of biomagnification so products which are used in agriculture for example chemicals which are used in agriculture they are highly toxic and they play a pivotal part in biomagnification for example pesticides then herbicides fungicides different inorganic fertilizers 
they are used widely in agriculture these are chemical these are synthetic and they are highly toxic okay so ultimately these chemicals they penetrate soil and then they are carried out to the rivers oceans or any other surface runoffs okay so as a result they enhance biomagnification definition of causing harm to an entire food chain okay now industrial activities like toxic by products they are released by various industries in nearby water bodies leading to biomagnification then gas emission by them they pollute the air and harm the ecosystem further organic contaminants are like uh, manures or biosolid they contain essential nutrients such as carbon nitrogen and phosphorus and plants primarily they use these so however industrial use of these substances also causes biomagnification then fourth is mining so products or sorry by uh, mining produces by products like copper cobalt zinc lead uh, and several other toxic chemicals so these are also toxic and these substances they are then deposited in soil and water resources further leading to the contamination and biomagnification okay so these these were some causes of biomagnification now about the effect so a significant effect of biomagnification is noted on human health that is in recent years large number of individuals who have consumed seafood regularly they have been diagnosed with cancer and the reason behind this is presence of mercury okay another point or another effect is uh, reproduction and development of all animals the destruct destruction of coral really coral reefs and most significant disruption in the natural food chain of the ecosystem okay these are the other effects which are uh, observed to which are caused by the biomagnification okay so yeah i hope the concept is clear now you can write a short note easily on biomagnification and bioaccumulation both are the different processes but they go they often occur ta in tandem okay so don't forget to like my video do share my video with your friends and do subscribe to my channel okay thank you for watching